we have a sellout at the Greensboro Coliseum for today's game between top right North Carolina and 12th rated Wake Forest. Dean Smith and Tar Heels are unbeaten and led by his two All-Americans, Sam Perkins and Michael Jordan. Perkins, the Tar Heels' most consistent player, leads Carolina in scoring and rebounding. Jordan, an outstanding athlete, is one of the game's most exciting players. He is deadly in clutch situations. Carl Tacey's Demon Deacons are 11 and 1, and their success is keyed by 6'6 sophomore Kenny Green, one of the ACC's biggest surprises. He leads the conference in field goal accuracy. A big four meeting on Tobacco Road, the Tar Heels against the Demon Deacons. By Muslim. North Carolina against Wake Forest. Starting lineup. At the forwards, Matt Doherty, fastly underrated. Mark Klein, his second consecutive start as a freshman. Sam Perkins, 26 points against Maryland. And Kenny Green, a budding star in the ACC. Brad Doherty's matured. And Anthony Ticci, the leading rebounder in the ACC. Kenny Smith leads him in assists and steals. And Delaney Rudd was out the last game with an E, but seems to be all right. Michael Jordan, just a great athlete. And Danny Young, their floor leader. The officials from the ACC, Joe Forte from Atlanta, Georgia, John Moreau from Richmond, Virginia, and Jim Birch from Cary, North Carolina. We will have the 45-second clock off the last four minutes. Sam Perkins, you can see, has a cast on that. Joe Forte steps in between and Perkins. We're about ready, and now it's go as the ball is tossed in the air. Tap controlled by Wake Forest. Away to Kenny Green. You'll get it away right away to Danny Young. Carolina has opened up a man-to-man -man defense, and Michael Jordan has drawn the defensive assignment on Young. Gets it to Rudd. Kenny Smith on him. Goes low to Green. Darty backing him. Here's Delaney Rudd to Klein to Tichy. Now to Green. Turn around. No good. And Carolina comes away with a rebound. Kenny Smith in the middle will hit Darty coming in on the left. All the way on the drive. Reverse layup is good. Matt Darty on the break. You'll remember it was Darty's two free throws that bailed Carolina out a year ago here in Greensboro. 2-0 in the first 35 seconds from the gate city of the Piedmont. Danny Young across the timeline, working to the right. Carolina again, man-to-man to, -man to Rudd. Smith fights through on him. Jumper, right corner is no good. Perkins taps it out, controlled by Green for Wake Forest. To Rudd, he drops it to Danny Young. Young calling out the Deacons' number three offense. Gets it away to Rudd. Rudd moving toward the right baseline. Bounces low to Green. Up off the glass. Shot an air ball. Klein comes out with a rebound. The freshman loops it up the sideline to Young. Young goes right back to Klein. Jumper left corner, and we've got a tie score. Two-time parade in All-America. The West Virginia Player of the Year for his final two years in high school. Mark Klein ties the score at 2-all. Carolina with 10 straight victories here under the big dome of the Greensboro Coliseum coming front court. Perkins at the right wing. Wake Forest is man-to-man. -man. Goes to Smith, deep in the right corner. Carolina trying to set its offense against the Deacon man-to-man. -man. Matt Doherty, top of the circle against Klein. Kenny Smith, long outside shot. Off the front of the rim, no good. Peachy, the ACC's leading rebounder, bucks down his first of the game. Score tied to all. Wake Forest can lead for the first time. The students filling up the... He stands here in uh, the Greensboro Coliseum, at least the lower part, right in behind the team benches, are on their feet and will be for most of the game. Trying to be a sixth man for Coach Carl Tacey's Deacons. Delaney Rudd controls at the left wing in front of a standing Dean Smith. Anthony Tichy had a notion, didn't pull the trigger from 17. Goes to Young, deep in the right corner, bounces low to Green, and Brad Darty reaching around him, draws the foul. It'll be number one on Darty, the Tar Heels' first team foul. One of the big things that Carolina's got to do is keep Kenny Green away from that basket, Woody. He is shooting 65%. He should be leading the ACC and uh, field goal percentage, and he's averaging almost 18 points a game. So you're going to see Carolina trying to keep him away from the basket. Line again out of the left corner. He likes that spot. He sends Wake Forest to its first lead at 4-2. to two. 17.50 left to play in the first half. Smith across the timeline, whips it to Brad Darty, standing uncontested on the left. To Perkins, now to Smith. Smith looked inside, goes to Jordan, gets it away now to Matt Darty, comes low to Perkins, back to Matt Darty, 15 feet, no good. Rebound, pulled down by Kenny Green for Wake Forest. 4-2 in favor of the Deacons. Danny Young across the timeline, works now to the right of the circle. You heard Dean Smith say in his pregame comments, Matt Darty's got to take that shot if he's open. He did, it was a little strong, came off the back of the iron. Young, away now to Tichy. Tichy runs into Kenny Smith. Tried to get it to Delaney Rudd, stolen by Smith. Lead comes to Perkins, coming in on the left side. Sam for the dunk. Score tied for a second time at four all on the Perkins dunk. 17-10, left to play in the first half. 
Delighted to have you with us this afternoon, and thank goodness the weather's improved considerably across the old North State today. Old Saul has reappeared. Delaney Rudd at the right wing. Back out front it comes to Danny Young in the midcourt area for Wake Forest. The Deacons in white going to the south goal here in the first half. Rudd bounces low to Green. Green turns baseline, hooks, no good. Right into the hands of the standing Sam Perkins, who was underneath the bucket. Kenny Smith down the right sideline. Carl Tacey standing. He's talking to John Moreau. I think he thought there was a foul on the play since Green's hook shot did not strike iron. Michael Young, low, in the lane. Knocked on the hand by Anthony Tichy and foul. No, it's going to be Mark Klein, not Tichy. The freshman from out of South Williamson, Kentucky, Mark Klein, draws his first personal foul. It'll be the first team foul, and Henry Wilmington's Michael Jordan will shoot a pair. Pretty obvious that Blake Forrest is going to try to move that ball down low on Carolina and take advantage of Kenny Green. And uh, Brad Dart has got a big job on Green right now, Woody. Green has uh, taken three shots. He's not. Uh, he's only drawn iron once. And so Carolina has uh, obviously made that a point of emphasis today. Michael Jordan's free throw used every bit of the orange paint on the rim before it fell through for his first point of the ball game. It's 5-4 in favor of Carolina. Jordan can break our second tie. Well, he's already done that, but he missed the free throw, so it's still a 5-4 Carolina lead. 16-28 left to play in the half. Wake Forest very quickly front court. Fine will go to his favorite spot, left corner only this time. Matt Darty's on him. We got a whistle. Foul on Brad Darty for bumping Kenny Green, and that will be number two on Black Mountain. Now the only uh, Black Mountain, North Carolina's Brad Darty. The only thing now that will disrupt Carolina's defensive plans and. Assistant coach Eddie Fogler was up and already seemed to be calling a defensive switch as Darty gets his second foul. Here's Delaney Rudd. Feeds away to Anthony Tichy. Tried to dunk and the foul's on Perkins. Sam Perkins draws his first. He was the safety foul there and he was the only man left to try to stop the Deacon thrust at the goal. Beautiful look away pass by Delaney Rudd. He spotted Tichy breaking for the basket underneath. Hit him with a look away pass and basically Sam was getting, he got there just a little bit late. He had uh, an open duck, and all Sam could do was hammer him. Anthony Tichy, one of the top five free throw shooters in the league, misses his first one. It remains a 5-4 Carolina lead. Dean Smith, flanked by Bill Guthridge and Eddie Fogler. Caught Tichy used some, or Kenny Green used some elbows a moment ago, and Brad Darty got that foul. Next free throw by Tichy's good. We've got our third tie of the ball game. It's been tied at two, at four, and now at five. Just over 16 minutes to go in the half. Rudd bumping Smith as he moves it to the left. Bounce pass away to Matt Darty. Darty holding high. Goes high post to Brad Darty. Brad holds it high. Looked to put it on the floor. Did not. We get a whistle and the foul on Young. Reaching in, trying to knock the ball away. Not a very smart foul, particularly when you think of the experience, Henry Hinton, that Danny Young, who played his... Uh, High school ball for Preston McLean at Enloe High School in Raleigh has got. Right now, an official timeout. Both these teams will sit down and talk about it as Carl Tacey was also complaining to Joe Fortex Smith and Carl Tacey want to work that ball inside. I've seen Carolina do it both times, or uh, several times down court, and uh, we talked about uh, Wake obviously trying to get the ball into Kenny Green, who came into this ball game shooting 65%. You got a guy like that, you want to have his hands on the ball. Neither team has made a substitution in the ball game as yet. Both teams return to the floor following the timeout with their starters. And it'll be Kenny Smith making the inbounds pass to Darty from underneath the Tar Heel goal. Darty away to Smith, looking inside. Brad Darty comes high post, away to Michael Jordan. Jordan fakes Klein, jump shot. No good, and it's Tichy who knocks the ball out of bounds, and it'll belong to Carolina. Tichy, Rudd, and Darty were all battling for the rebound, and it was Tichy who knocked it out, according to... Official Jim Birch working that baseline. Kenny Smith again to inbounds. Does to Darty at the left wing. Matt holds high. Gets it to Brad Darty at the high post. He'll take the jump shot from there. It's no good. Michael Jordan trying to follow up. He scores, but he travels, says Jim Birch. So the score remains tied at five all. And Wake Forest will get the ball on the turnover, disallowing the Jordan layup from the right side. Fifteen and a half minutes to play in the first half. Danny Young looking to coach Carl Tacey for the call. Now calls out number two as he gets across the timeline against Michael Jordan. Carolina man-to-man. -man. Young leaning in. Now comes to Kenny Green. Sam Perkins has got the job since Brad Darty got two quick fouls. Darty's moved over to take Anthony Tichy. Mark Klein. Klein works against Matt Darty. Drops it now to Danny Young in the midcourt area against Kenny Smith. Smith working now to the right side on that right-hand dribble. Picks up the dribble now. Looking to the high post. Tichy comes to get it against Brad Darty. Darty playing the windmill defense on him. Tichy drives in. will use the glass. No good. Tapped around. Jordan finally comes away with it for Carolina. Tries to get by Young. Young bumps him enough just to hold him up in the backcourt till the Deacon defense can get front court to set up. Now it's Matt Darty down the left side. Goes low post to Perkins. Back to Matt Darty. He double clutched it. Jump. No good. Darty comes away. 
away with it. Knocked right back into his hands. He works now to the right side. Bounce passes to Matt, uh, Brad Darty. Matt Darty looked inside to Brad Darty. Turns around off the glass and scores. Brad Darty gets his first bucket, and Carolina retakes the lead at 7 to 5 with 14 and a half minutes to play in the opening half. Dean Smith calling on Buzz Peterson. He'll report to the scorer's table, the end of the lineup on the next dead ball. Klein down the right sideline, caught up in the double team, bounces to Young. He comes baseline, feeds Green for the one handed dunk on the left. Nice pass, Danny Young. He found the void in the Tar Heel defense at the baseline, but felt it closing fast, so he fed Kenny Green for the fourth tie of the game. A little bit of uh, taking a chance on the part of Sam Perkins to uh, burn Carolina on that one, Woody. He went for the steal, and uh, that left somebody open underneath for the dunk. Kenny Green gets it up to Brad Darty at the right wing. Sam Perkins breaks free, top of the circle. Takes the pass now to Kenny Smith on the left side. Comes down to Buzz Peterson, whips it to Matt Darty. Goes low to Perkins. Perkins works on Green. Hooked over him and scores. Sam Perkins with four, and it's 9-7 in favor of Carolina. Danny Young, lead pass to Ruddy. He had to jump to catch it down the right sideline. Perkins on him in the mismatch, and we got a blocking foul called on Perkins. Wake Forest guards, who are excellent ball handlers and good perimeter shooters, are also very effective, Henry, on leaning in. Rudd started the drive to the lane. Perkins came over defensively, and Rudd leaned in on him to draw the foul. That was contact with him. I think you're right. Sam was moving along with him. I'm not sure that was just a little incidental contact. I don't think it did anything to impede his progress, which is sort of what Fred Barricat wants uh, the foul called, is when you put him at a disadvantage. The roar of the crowd greets Danny Young, shot from 20 feet, and Wake Forest ties it for a fifth time at 9-all. Kenny Smith works against Delaney Rudd in front of the Deacon bench, turns, goes to the top of the circle. Now to Buzz Peterson, who's replaced Michael Jordan. Buzz Peterson, left sideline to Brad Darty. Turn, ball knocked away. Peachy knocked it away. Young's up with it. No foul on the play. Two turnovers now for Carolina. Here's Young at the foul line, forces it up, and it won't go. Brad Darty and Perkins were all alone battling for it. Darty took it away from behind. Here's Matt Darty against Klein down the right side. We'll go to the baseline. Klein cuts him off, looking for help, bounces it low to Perkins. Perkins turns on. Green jump hook, no good. Brad Darty taps it, no good. Knocked out of bounds by Peterson. It belongs to Wake Forest, says John Moreau. 12.51 to play in the half. It's 9-9. And Matt Darty is out as Michael Jordan returns. Joe Wolf from Kohler, Wisconsin, is in. And Brad darty has gone out. Wake Forest continues to do a good job on Carolina's board, but you got to wonder how long Anthony Pesci can keep up the uh, the momentum he's got, and the stamina is going to have to go here before too long. Is playing against the big trees in Carolina. His backup, of course, Tony Karasik, got hurt against William and Mary this week, and so Anthony Pesci may have to pull their blood of the front of the load this afternoon, rebounding wise. John Toms has replaced Klein to Pesci to Rudd. Shot right corner, no good. Rebound by Kenny Green, up over Wolf, and it's no good. They battle inside for and it is Anthony Titi who commits the personal foul on the rebound. Joe Forte came from all the way along the right sideline. Henry, you make an awfully good point about the lack of depth along the Deacon front line, and not only is Karasik's injury a problem, but the fact that Todd May, the transfer from Kentucky, has not been able to play this year, underwent surgery Thursday on his broken metatarsal, so he's not available. And Coach Carl Tacey says he simply has to play people on that front line too long. Jordan, top of the circle. Score tied nine for a fifth time. Carolina chance to go back on top. Peterson faking Young. Jump shot. No good. Rebound captured by Chichi. Peterson, who went 0 for 5 at Maryland, has missed his first shot this afternoon against Wake Forest. Delaney Rudd faking Smith. Drives baseline. Gets it back to Tichy. In the corner it goes to John Toms. Toms drops it now to Tichy. Back out in the midcourt area. It comes to Young. Tacey said coming into the game as Deacons would have to be very patient, particularly on offense. And Wake Forest showing patience right now as Carolina has gone back to the man-to-man, -man, having been in the 1-3-1 last time. John Toms from Danny Young. The Shelby North Carolina senior puts Wake ahead 11 tonight. Kenny Smith down the right sideline. Whips it back to Joe Wolf. That goes over to Buzz Peterson. Peterson looking inside the Deacons man-to-man. -man. Goes to Perkins. He works baseline. Draws the double team. Back to Peterson. Inside to Wolf. Turn around. 10 feet. Good. I'll tell you one thing. There is no hesitation at all on the part of the Kohler Wisconsin freshman. He catches that rock and he knows what to do with it in the lane. Carolina's shooting 5 for 11 right now. Wake Forest 5 for 13 in the ball game. But Kenny Short. Smith has not scored a bucket yet. Woody, he's 0 for 5. Score tied for the sixth time. Here's the jump shot taken by Kenny Green. Green's got his second, uh, or is that his third field goal? It's his second field goal at an earlier stuff, and it's 13 to 11. Wake Forest back on top. 
Just under 11 minutes, here's Michael Jordan turning left baseline, shooting from behind the glass and scoring. That had a little touch of class to it. The score is wrong, and that's why the fans are yelling. It should be 13 to 11, Carolina. Shot missed by uh, Delaney Rudd. Popped out. Wolf came up with it. 13-13 is the score. It's now been corrected. Kenny Smith takes it all the way, but travel. Evading the defensive man, he pulled the ball down and made his last move into the lane, and when he did, he had no dribble left. That's the third turnover. Substitutions will be made, but before they can be, there is an official timeout taken here in Greensboro. So a timeout on the floor. And so Dave Popson, the freshman from Ashley, Pennsylvania, will come into the lineup with C. Selection, the senior from Dudley, North Carolina, and Steve Hale, the sophomore from Jinx, Oklahoma. So this lineup Carolina's got on the floor now will have Hale and Peterson up front, and uh, the back line will include Popson, Exum, and Brad Darty. Wake Forest is sticking with Danny Young, Anthony Ticci, John Toms, Delaney Rudd, and Kenny Green. John Toms had been the starter at the uh, small forward when the season began, but his shooting fell way off, and then Lee Garber took the job a while, and now freshman Mark Klein's got it. That's been the real uh, void in the Deacon lineup since the start of the season. Just not much coming out of that number three spot. Danny Young, double team, puts it down the sideline to Rudd on the right. Back it comes to midcourt area to Green. We're tied at 13 all with 10-15 to go in the first half. Terry Holland will talk with Henry Hinton at halftime. Jump shots up, no good. Brad Darty and Popson battle for it. And it's Popson getting it on the right baseline. Off to Hale. Steve Hale coming front court, picked up by Delaney Rudd. Moving down in the right corner to Exum. One dribble, then Exum will come back to Hale. Now he whips it quickly left side to Peterson. Goes to Brad Darty. Jump shot is no good. tichi has got the rebound. Tar Heels shooting thus far, 6 of 14, 13-13. The score remains tied. Danny Young to Tichy, Carolina man-to-man. Tichy whips a pass around, pops into green to Danny Young. Open right baseline, no good. Brad Darty down with a rebound. Took it away from Tom. Gets it to Hale. Hale front court. Popson was breaking. Hale couldn't see him. Tried to feed it to him. It's stolen by Danny Young for Wake Forest. Tar Heels have committed four turnovers here in the first half. Wake Forest has but one. We talked about those adept ball handlers in the Deacon backcourt. Delaney Rudd and Danny Young, and it's Young handling it right now. Comes to Kenny Green. Drives at the lane. Puts up a running one-hander that's good. Kenny Green's got six of the Deacon's 15 points. Wake Forest leads 15-13. Just over nine minutes to play in the half. Steve Hale works against Rudd to pops it at the right wing. Exum breaks free, top of the circle. Now it's to Peterson over on the left side. Feeds Exum. Exum left open, left baseline. Jumper's good. Score tied for an eighth time on Cecil Exum's first field goal at 15 all. 8.50 left to go on the half. We'll also have an Ask Woody question at halftime about the new student activity center at Chapel Hill. Hope you'll stick around for that. You've got a question to ask me? Call our number at 919-933-9000 anytime, day or night. Tom shoots off the rim. Rebounded Tichy. From behind, pops it on the left baseline to Toms, to Danny Young. High lob, Kenny Green couldn't control it. Made a great catch of the ball behind the glass. Dumps it to Tichy. Knocked away. Exum went out of bounds off Green. It'll be Carolina's ball. Cecil stuck a hand around. Knocked the ball out of Tichy's hand. It hit Green. Went on over the end line. It'll be Carolina's ball on Wake's second turnover. And Tyrone Bogues, the smallest player in the history of the Atlantic Coast Conference, has entered the lineup. He's a 5'3 freshman from Dunbar High School in Baltimore. They call him Muggsy. Actually, Anthony Tichy calls him Love for Dr. Loveless, the villain in Wild Wild West. He is all over the place. Knocked away Tichy out of bounds. Still be Carolina's ball. 8.05 to play in the first half. Score tied 15-15. Dean Smith wants Carolina's passing game, I think, here. On the inbound play as Hale will inbound the ball to Darty. Brad looks to Dave Pops and gives it to him in the high post. He drops it to Hale. Hale penetrating, knocked away. Bogues recovered Jordan. Well, Bogues so far this season has come up with 17 steals, and he almost had 18 right there. Brad Darty low. Back to Matt Darty. In the lane. Jump shot. 10 feet. Good. Hit the front side of the rim. Had enough rotation to get it up and over for 17-15 Carolina lead. Down at the other end. Shot taken, missed. Crowd boos. Thought there should have been a foul. Hitting the deck was Delaney Rudd. Here's Carolina. Brad Darty on the outlet to Matt Darty. Going to the left. Bounces low to Jordan. Turns to the lane. Falls away against Tichy and scores. Michael Jordan with five, and it's 19-15. The Heels have opened their biggest lead of the first half. 7.20 left to play in the half. 
Tyrone Bogues across the timeline. High lob to Delaney Rudd. Open from 25 feet. Bottom. 19-17. Delaney Rudd, second field goal. Carolina defense not playing very hard then on the perimeter. Here's Darty coming down on the right side to Michael Jordan. Turn around off the baseline. It went in. Came out. Went back in off the glass. Michael Jordan with 7, 21, 17. The Rudd caught the double team. The Green, short jumper, good from eight feet in the lane. Kenny Green's got eight. So we're watching two of the best in the ACC. Michael Jordan and Kenny Green duel individually right now for their respective clubs. Here's Jordan, left of the lane. Back to Matt Doherty. Goes back to Jordan. Turns off the left baseline. Wouldn't go that time. Tapped by Tichy, caught by Bogues. Bogues coming on the quick run, and boy, can he motor. Gets it away to Rudd, deep in the right corner. Low to Young, turns over Doherty. Scores, and Doherty draws his third personal. Kenny Green with 10. Brad Doherty has his third. Carolina's fourth team foul. 6.25 to play in the half. Woody, what great action. Boy, you can't get this unless you have a couple of teams that are of the caliber that Wake Forest and Carolina are. Kenny Green and Michael Jordan just putting on a show for these fans here at the Greensboro Coliseum. And Michael, when he was out down posting up low, was really begging for the ball. He really felt like he had the hot hand, and he did for a moment. Kenny Green completes the three-point play. He's got 11, 22, 21, Wake Forest. The Deacons quickly wipe out the four-point deficit, take a one-point lead of their own. Kind of with a 21-22 deficit, a one-point deficit right now. It seemed like when Carolina had their little spark ignited, Wake Forest was ignited by the fact that they had uh, started a little bit of a surge. And Carolina now 10 of 19, 53%. The Deacons 10 of 23, 43%. And uh, you heard Carl Tacey say in the pregame show that he thought the key to the ball game was rebounds, and we're dead even at 10 on that uh, category. Green has got nine points rather than 11. I had mistakenly given him one of Delaney Rudds, and I held up there momentarily because the alley-oop to Jordan was missed. It came off the back of the rim. Bounce. Jordan goes to the other end and blocks Delaney Rudd and comes away with it. Amazing. He missed that dunk, and rather than be frustrated on the alley-oop, Poland by Bogues. Here's Kenny Green. Kenny Smith will try to shut Bogues off. He does. Ball lost, recovered Bogues. He went out of bounds and came back in, right underneath the big guys to recover. My goodness, what a flurry there a moment ago. Wake Forest in control, 22-21, and has the ball. Kenny Green faking up for the shot. No good. Touched by Sam Perkins, tapped to Kenny Smith. Kenny Green We've got an down, injured Woody. player. It is Kenny Green, Henry. Here's Matt Darty. Back to Kenny Smith. Away to Perkins in the lane. Missed it. Ball tapped outside. Green's up. He takes the pass. Kenny Smith trying to shut him off. The jump shot's good. Now 11 points for Kenny Green. 24 to 21. Wake Forest to its biggest lead of the game. Three points. 5.15 left to play in the first half. Wake Forest in the 2-3 zone. Matt Darty on the right side. Down to Kenny Smith. Back it comes to Darty. Over to Michael Jordan. Jordan on the left. To Darty. Top of the circle. Comes to the foul line. Kenny Smith now gives it to Sam Perkins. Matt Darty. Michael Jordan. Jump shot from there. No good. Rebound by Tichy. Under five minutes to play in the half. He drops it off to Bogues. Bogues, if anything, has changed the complexion of this game. He's caused the tempo to increase. Bogues calling out the offense now. We'll send it away to Rudd at the hash mark on the right. Carolina man to man. The Klein deep in the right corner. Now it comes back to Rudd. Woody Kenny Smith was holding his eye. I think he got poked in the eye on that last exchange down court. Here's Rudd off the glass. Good. 26 to 21. Wake Forest by five. 425 to play. Kenny Smith front court for the Tar Heels in their road blue. They're working to the north goal in the first half. Matt Doherty on the wing. Knocked away. Rudd into the scores table out of bounds. It'll still be Carolina's ball. The Deacon fans are ecstatic. You would imagine the 12th ranked Wake Forest Deacons have the number one Tar Heels down five. But Carolina as yet not showing any loss of composure. Still very calm, very relaxed. Because well, they know there's a lot of time, Henry. I believe I said that Kenny Smith was hit in the eye. I meant to say Kenny Green was hit in the eye. And that uh, little injury actually gave uh, Wake Forest a basket because Green was laying on the ground back under the Wake Forest basket when the break started down on the other end of the court. And they got it down to him for a quick basket. All he had to do was get up off the floor and make the bucket. Carolina with a stretch earlier of six of seven now has missed its last four shots. 
Matt Doherty on the right side. Looking high post to Jordan. Couldn't get it to him. Now Perkins moves out right of the lane. Cross court, it goes to Jordan. Jordan into the lane. Feeds Matt Doherty. Jumper right baseline. No good. And it's lost out of bounds by Tichy. It'll still be Carolina's ball. Doherty is having problems with his shooting here today. Matt is now two of five in the ball game. And we've got an official timeout taken before the inbound play. So with 3.50 left to play in the first half, timeout on the floor with the score, Wake Forest 26. And let's see, there's a fifth Wake Forest player in there. Uh, oh, Kenny Green. Here's the short jumper in the lane by Joe Wolf on the inbound. Wolf has his second field goal, and it's 26-23. Bogues picked up by Peterson in the backcourt. High lob over to Danny Young. Young down the right sideline, gave it to Klein, goes to Tichy deep in the corner, Sam Perkins on him. Joe Wolf has got the defensive assignment now on Kenny Green. Brad Doherty riding the bench now with three personal fouls, got his third, uh, oh, just over three minutes ago. Anthony Tichy bounces low to Green, got free, puts it up off the glass. Perkins was in front of him, Jordan behind him, but Kenny Green gets his 13th point of the game. 28-23, Wake Forest by five. Kenny Smith against Bogues, breaks his dribble, goes to Buzz Peterson. Peterson comes right back to Smith with it. Now it goes to Joe Wolf. Now to Michael Jordan deep in the right corner. Jordan will come up the sideline against Mark Klein to the hash mark to Kenny Smith. Boy, Bogues' neck must be awfully sore when the game's over. He looks up to everybody he plays. Ball knocked loose, went out of bounds, off Buzz Peterson, says Jim Birch. It'll be Carolina's ball. Fifth turnover. Dean Smith wondering why there wasn't a foul called on the play when it got knocked loose by the Deacon double team. Wake Forest is playing terrific defense on Carolina, and at the other end of the court, Wake Forest has gotten a little hot. Kenny Green went one of five to start the ball game, and now Woody, he's hit five of the last six shots he's taken. Bounce pass from Bogues to Woody Young along the right sideline. Smith up in his face, now comes to Green. Wolf on him, intercepted Peterson. Peterson coming front court, and Danny Young reached in and fouled him. Kept Peterson from adequately running the break, so the foul on Young will be his uh, second, and that will only be the fourth team foul against Wake Forest, so Carolina will get the ball out of bounds of the backcourt. You know, Henry, last Saturday when Wake Forest was upset at Georgia Tech, that was the first time since his sophomore year in high school that Tyrone Bogues had been on a losing team. 28-23. He played terrific last year in high school. He's 31-0, would he? 59 and over two years at Dunbar in Baltimore, and he was the MVP on a team that included Reggie Williams. Perkins turns, shoots, shot partially deflected, now caught by Young as it got knocked long, coming off the front of the rim. 28-23, Wake Forest, Danny Young cut off at the baseline, back up the sideline, it goes to Bogues. Bogues taking it out into the midcourt area to set it up. He wants the one Deacon offense now. Bounce pass away to Young. Young faking Jordan will put up the jump shot off the glass. It rimmed out would go. Perkins couldn't hold it. It went out of bounds. It'll still belong to Wake Forest. 28-23 in favor of Wake Forest. Less than two minutes to go in the half. Bogues and uh, Klein are out. Delaney Rudd and John Toms return. Now I'll bet you, Henry, that the momentum of this game, the tempo at least, suddenly slows a little bit. Now, it won't, it won't come down a complete stall, but I was amazed at what Bose did to the tempo of the game when he came in. Rudd to Tichy. Carolina packed back into the zone now. Danny Young will control it in the midcourt area. Carolina going to its 1-3-1 point zone now. Young looking inside, gives it to Rudd. Now the cross-court pass to Toms. Now it comes back to Rudd and Young. Now in the left corner to Tichy. Back to Young. Here's Rudd from 20 feet. Good! 30 to 23, the Deacons have their biggest lead at seven points. Six points for Hollister, North Carolina's Delaney Rudd. Matt Doherty from Smith, back to Smith. Now back to Doherty, to Smith on the right. High post to Popson. Popson puts it to the floor, one dribble, takes the jump shot, good! Popson from 15 feet. Well, the two big freshman front line players have come off the, come off the bench and contributed six points now for Carolina. 30-25 with one minute. Carl Tracy standing, might want his team to go for one unless something's there. Green turns around off the glass, no good. Tichy comes down with a rebound, blocked behind by Doherty, and he draws the foul. It'll be number one on Matt Doherty. That will be the fifth team foul against Carolina, and three of those five team fouls have come against Brad Doherty, who's been on the bench now since the 625 mark. Bogues is coming back to replace Young. Woody. Once again, you'll probably see the tempo of the game pick up just a little bit, but I think the key so far is the, the defense that Wake Forest is playing with Carolina. I don't think that the Carolina has seen this kind of defense, uh, this intense and tenacious type defense that Wake is playing today as Peachy drops through his first uh, free throw that 
they're seeing here today. Wake came into this ball game holding 166 to 203 edge in turnovers over its opponents and 62 to 21 in blocked shots. 31 to 25, make it 32 25 as Tichi makes both of his free throws. He missed his first one, but the third, fifth leading free throw shooter in the ACC's canned his last three. 32 25, 45 seconds left to play in the half. Smith dropped the ball but recovered with Bogues on him. Here's Matt Darty across to Kenny Smith. Smith against Bogues breaks his dribble, goes to Matt Darty. Darty open from 10 feet, jumper good. Matt Darty with six points. 32-27 with 30 seconds to play. The Deacons will probably want to wait on one, and already the Wake Forest student body is telling the team, wait for one shot. Here's Bogues in the midcourt area against Kenny Smith. On the drive, can't get through, will have to come back out and set it up. He's a muscular 135-pounder. Here's his drive to Tom. He walked with it, and it wasn't called. Delaney Rudd in the midcourt area. Now comes to Bogues with five. Four. Jordan reached around. Bogues on the drive. Scoops it away to Green. He double dribbled it. Has the clock run out? No horn as yet. Double zero is showing on the clock. The half may be over. Woody, there was two seconds remaining on the clock, and I don't think the uh, clock keeper heard the whistle. There's a lot of noise down there on the floor, and I think they're going to put a couple of seconds back on the clock. But now Carl Tacey is coming down to argue that... <laughs> That should not be the case, and he's been talking with Joe Forte right now. Well, Henry, there are scoreboard clocks on the front end of the balcony at each end of the Coliseum, and Joe Forte pointed to the scoreboard clock on the front end of the balcony and that he could see it, that there was time left. The whistle blew with two seconds left on the clock. Now, where they'll put two back on, I don't know. Forte seemed to be indicating one with an index finger up. So now, let's see, we got to go back, and this will take a minute, because what they'll have to do is they may have to get it to a minute and then let it run down. Because they cannot back it up. Now see, they cut the clock back on before they had, uh, had tried to reset it. They were going to let it run down, and the horn went off, so now they've got to reset. So, we've got to uh, fill, as they say in our business right now, because the clock is at 50 seconds, and they've got to run it down to either two or one. Now the score is 32 to 27. Carolina, of course, would like to get the basket to go to the dressing room down by only three, having trailed here in the first half by as many as seven after having led by four. But it was that four-point lead, Henry, at about the seven-minute mark of the first half at 21-17 when things suddenly turned around. Carolina started to miss and the Deacons started to hit. Well, I think Tyrone Bogues was the key. He came in. I tell you, you have to watch this guy play. He's 5-3, a freshman guard out of the Baltimore area. And, uh, he has not uh, hit any shots, I don't think, would he, has he? But no. That's his, Henry, that's his, one, uh, that's his one weakness. They say he is a mediocre shooter, but he's 135 pounds. And I'll tell you what, he looks about as solid as a fire hydrant. He bench <laughs> presses 165 pounds. And he's, much not, he's not much taller than one either. But. Well, you know, he comes from a small family. His dad is 5'6", his mom's 5'1", so, you know, they weren't growing trees in that family. <laughs> but uh, the great thing about that young man is he proves that if you've got enough desire, a guy of any size can play the game. One second left. Wolf's going to inbound the ball. He threw it over Kenny Smith's head. Wake Forest gets the ball right in front of the Carolina bench. So the Deacons may turn this in to a seven-point lead at 34-27. They've got that opportunity with one second remaining. Now what is it? The clock shows zero again, but the clock cannot start until somebody touches the ball and bounds. Right. And it's so just, there's one second left on the clock. They, uh, Joe Forte, they've got, they, I think they're going to have to reset the thing again. You know, with all of the uh, wonderful things we enjoy, modern technology in our world today, it seems like somebody could invent a clock <laughs> that they could immediately set back on the seconds, Woody. I think that uh, if I could invent that, maybe I could make a lot of money. Well, just to show you how some people keep their heads even in the uh, hectic situations that exist sometime in games, Dean Smith has put Timo Makinen into the lineup, who at 6'11 will go in simply for defensive purposes to get underneath to try to prevent a high lob out-of-bounds alley-oop pass uh, to the goal. So we're at 22, and the clock is running down again. They'll stop it at one second. And you know, Henry, as we always get into when teams are trying last-second shots in which the outcomes of games uh, ride on it, we always talk about, you know, there can be more than one full second left on that clock because, right. you know, it goes as the uh, 
sell or whatever they talk about that trigger those sorts of things. Uh, there's actually probably a, a little more than a second left to play. Well, I think Wake Forest will try to throw a Hail Mary at the basket, Woody, and you know, the worst they want to come out of it with is a foul if they can't get a bucket. So let's see what happens. Here's Toms to inbound the ball from in front of the Tar Heel bench against Popson, who's leaping in the air in front of him. Got it to <laughs> run. The ball was fumbled. Now for sure. This is the third time, but I'll guarantee you the half is over. But it's been a half highlighted by Wake Forest's five-point lead. You worked so hard. Coliseum, 32 to 27. It's an excellent job right at the start of the ball game and continue to do that throughout the first half. Now, if you look at these teams, it's hard sometimes to find out what their strategy is, but we're going to go to our CBS shot chart. Billy, we have an interesting thing we're going to show. On the right-hand side, you have mapped the play of Kenny Green, the sophomore from Wake Forest. That's right. The dark uh, dots right here are shots that uh, Kenny made. You can see Wake Forest was very effective being able to go inside to Green, right in the area he likes to handle the ball. He was only 7 for 13, which is still better than 50% in the first half, but 6 out of the last 8. He was able to make, and that really got Wake on track. Down at the other end of the court, so often you look at Carolina and you say Jordan and Perkins are responsible for a little over 44% of the total offense. Here in the first half, Wake Forces has done a little better job. They've held those two fellas down to just five field goals made. And in that particular case, you'd have to say Wake Forest getting better of it in regard to the pregame strategy on behalf of the two coaches. But you can see also, Billy, they are getting that ball inside, the good percentage shots. As an end result, North Carolina shooting 48%, Wake Forest a little over 44. We've had nine ties, four lead changes. Wake Forest took the lead at the 625 mark of the first half when Green made that three-point play, and they have not relinquished it up to this point. One of the things you'll see in the second half is Dean Smith will probably go with this starting lineup for a much... Colts and hoses never seem to break unless you're going somewhere. So go to CarQuest Auto Parts Store for gates, belts, and hose. They should be changed about every four years before wear sets in. And CarQuest has just what your car needs from gates. So before that belt decides to take a break, make a fast break with CarQuest and carry a spare with hoses and belts from gates. I'm the man behind the bread. We're in the yellow pages. Underway in Greensboro, and Carolina quickly gets the first goal of the second half from Matt Darty, his eighth point of the game, and the Heels have cut the Deacon lead to three. 32-29, Wake Forest now on offense, going to the north goal here in the second half. Here's uh, the feed to Kenny Green from off the baseline, no good. Had it, lost it, ball loose, picked up by Darty. Everybody stood around a moment, I think, thinking there might be a foul call. Here's Darty deep in the left corner, goes low to Perkins. Perkins against Green, and it's 32 31. And the Tar Heels have come out of the dressing room smoking here in the first 45 seconds of play. Wake Forest led by as many as seven in the first half. Carolina was up by as many as four at one time before the Deacons got hot. Danny Young down the right sideline in front of the Deacon bench. Goes to Kenny Green, now back to Young. Young to the foul line, decline. Jumper is no good. Rebound by Perkins. Nice inside position on Green. Kenny Green with a chance to give Carolina the lead. Brad Darty fumbled it, had it knocked away out of his hand by Danny Young. It'll still be Carolina's ball. 18.50 left to play in the ball game. 32-31. The Heels trying to go 12-0. Wake Forest, number 12, trying to pull off an upset of number one and go 12-1. Kenny Smith, alley up to Jordan, thrown too far behind him. Michael could not hold on to the ball, and it's captured by Kenny Green to Danny Young. Now to Delaney Rudd, back to Green for the layup. So good, Darty with a rebound. Jordan was with him. Credit Michael Jordan's defense with keeping Green from scoring. Matt Darty, 10 feet, good, and Carolina leads 33 to 32. Carl Casey will need a timeout, I think. Henry Hinton before he gets one for television. I don't know what uh, they did at halftime, but they must have given them something, Woody. They get them out, cut them out of the uh, shoot early here. Carolina has scored six points, Wake Forest none in the second half. Well, it's like the Maryland players said Thursday night. You know second half, Carolina's going to come back and be aggressive. Peachy with a nice roll to the lane, and he gets his first field goal of the day, fifth point of the ball game. 34-33, Wake Forest moves back on top. Sam Perkins from 17, fakes green, puts it to the floor to Kenny Smith. Shot from the left, good. Kenny Smith's first basket of the ball game in the first half. The freshman from out of the Queens, New York, went 0 for 1. 35-34, Carolina, 17-40 left to play. 
Here's Denny Young, high post to Klein. Perkins backs up, Klein drives, feeds Green, mishandle it, puts it up, and he traveled, and that turns it over. Klein fumbled the ball at the start of that play as Sam Perkins was backing off of him defensively to drop back. Sam knew that Kenny Green was back there, and he was backing to help out, and then when the pass got tapped to Green, he couldn't handle it. Kenny Smith on the drive, wouldn't go down. Blocked away by Anthony Peachy. 35-34, the ball never actually got up above the rim, and it's the Deacons trying to retake the lead. Danny Young against Buzz Peterson, who's in the lineup now for Jordan. Wade goes to Klein at the left wing. Klein looked to Kenny Green, couldn't get him the ball. Bounces low to Rudd. Rudd against uh, Peterson, puts up the shot, no good. And Jim Burt whistles a foul on Buzz Peterson. The Asheville Jr. has his first, and that'll be the first team foul of the second half against the Tar Heels. Well, I'm sure he's not upset about this play, but uh, a moment ago, one of the Wake Forest fans sitting right behind Press Row on the opposite side of the court from the coaches when he held up a big eye chart for Joe Forte. <laughs> when Forte was running down the court, Joe took a quick look at it. I'm not sure if he could read it from where he was or not, but I don't know. That man might be an ophthalmologist or an optometrist or something, but he brought along his eye chart for the officials today. 35-34, Danny Young goes to the line for the first time today. Danny shooting less than 70% at the line here in the early going, and he's short on that one. I say early going. I'm talking about the early going of the season. Although we are nearing the midway point. You'll have another shot coming, 35-34. This game was tied seven times in the first half. It could be tied an eighth if Young knocks this one in, and he does. 35-35 on Danny Young's third point of the game. Kenny Smith against Delaney Rudd, working to the left side, right in front of the Tar Heel bench, breaks his dribble, goes to Brad Darty with Tichy on him. Tichy looks to Perkins. Green was fronting him. Perkins breaks high. Peterson now gives it to Perkins left of the circle. Fakes Green, goes low to Brad Darty. Jump hook, good. 37-35, Brad Darty with his fourth point. 16.45 to play. Long lead pass to Klein. He ran it down the left corner. Never really mishandled it. He just didn't catch it very well. Shot is no good. Rudd with a rebound. Muscles in. Fires off the glass. Good. He had to put it up over both, both Jordan and Darty, but somehow he got it up there and got it back down through the net. 37-37, score tied. Ball lost, bodies on the floor. Kenny Smith to Michael Jordan, reverse layup is no good. We got a whistle and a two-shot foul has been called against Wake Forest. Joe Forte making the call on Denny Young, and it will be number three on the Raleigh Senior. First team foul of the second half against Wake Forest. With this score tied, a ninth time at 37 all, Jordan goes to the free throw line with just over 16 minutes to play. First one up by the Wilmington, North Carolina native, and it's good. I say Wilmington, North Carolina native. You know, Henry, I went down to the day in Wilmington for his honor after Carolina won the national championship. John Tom's back in the lineup for Wake Forest. And one of his uh, uh, answers, grandmother or something, got up down there and told me, he said, tell everybody on the radio that Michael is from Peachy, North Carolina. He's not from <laughs> Wilmington, because that's where he was born. Is that down near Burgo? I think so. That's right. Michael makes both of them, and it's 39-37. Double team in the backcourt. Young gets it front court to John Toms. Across the timeline now comes Danny Young for the Deacons with 16 minutes left to play in the ball game. Young looking inside the Carolina man-to-man. -man. Here's Delaney Rudd from Young spinning into the lane. Wanted to put up the shot from 10 feet. Could not against Smith and Darty. Now Young resets the offense in the midcourt area. 39-37, Carolina. Here's Tichy coming to the high post. Now to Toms. He'll come, take the jumper over Matt Darty. It's no good. Rebound pulled out by Perkins. Got it away to Matt Darty. Jordan going down on the right. Darty can't get it to him. He'll drive right of the lane. Feeds him off the baseline. Count it. 41-37. Carolina goes back on top by four with Michael Jordan's 11th point of the ball game. That's his first field goal of the second half. And right now, the teams will get a chance to catch their breath. An official timeout's been taken. But Carolina has battled back from a seven-point first-half deficit here in the first four. Well, Carolina has outscored Wake Forest 14-5 to in the uh, second half. The Tar Heels have hit six of seven shots. 86%. They're red hot out of the uh, dressing room at half. Wake Forest two for seven, just 29%. Carolina leads in the rebound department four to two here early in the second half. Carolina's matched its biggest lead of the game at four as Wake Forest controls in the Deacon backcourt. Young against uh, Jordan pushing off the Deacon bench. Thought there should have been a foul on Jordan. 
No reaction from the Carolina bench as Rudd fires from the right wing, and it's 41 to 39. Delaney Rudd has his 10th point of the ball game. 15 plus minutes left to go. Perkins top of the circle from Smith. Dribbles into the top of the foul circle. Bounces low to Brad Darty. Turned on Tichy. Turns around off that baseline. It won't go down. Tap follow no good. Jordan will run it down on the right baseline. Almost into the corner. Comes to Matt Darty. Now to Kenny Smith. Top of the circle. Kenny will move near the center jump circle to reset the Tar Heel offense. Now he hits Brad Darty at the right wing. Brad holding high. Comes to Perkins. Top of the circle. Back door. Kenny Smith. Layup good. 43-39. Kenny Smith gets his second field goal of the game. Wake Forest defense just sort of lulled to sleep a little bit there. The uh, people along the front line moved out. Here's Delaney Rudd from Young. Jump shot. No good. Perkins with a rebound on the right. First half, Sam Perkins was credited with only one rebound. Stolen by Young for Wake Forest. Deacon's coming the other way. Young on the drive. Good. Darty was there, didn't foul, and Perkins didn't want to take the foul, and Young gets the layup for his fifth point of the game. 43-41, the Tar Heel lead cut back to two. Smith down on the left wing to Darty, right in front of the Tar Heel bench. Brad holding high, look to Matt, will drop it deep in that left corner to Smith. Now comes to Perkins, just left of the circle. Perkins looking inside, puts it to the floor once. Jordan can't get away from Tom. Sam will fire and knocks the bottom out of it. 45 to 41. Well, when all your options aren't there, just knock that rock in. Eight points for Perkins. 45-41, 13-40. Left to play. Delaney Rudd against Kenny Smith. Coming off the hash on the right side. Bounce low to Green. Green off the baseline. Good! That ball hit the back of the rim, laid up on the rim support, and then finally dropped through for his 17th point of the game. Jordan. Blocked. Knocked away by Anthony Tichy, and that ignites the Deacons and even gets Carl Casey pumping the air in front of the Deacon bench. 45-43. Wake Forest with a chance to tie this game for an 11th time. Kenny Green off the right baseline. Doesn't do it. Kept falling no good by John Thompson. Matt Doherty comes away with it. Doherty will wait for traffic to clear. Gives it up to Kenny Smith. To Jordan in the right corner. Coming out of the corner. Beats Perkins. Perkins will drive on the left. Over to the top of Kenny Green. Won't go. Perkins with the rebound. Muscles it back up. It goes and he's fouled. It is good, says John Moreau. The foul is on Kenny Green. It's his first, and it's the second team foul against Wake Forest. Henry, that was just, again, great physical effort on the part of Perkins. He drove, couldn't get the first shot to go down as he fired it over Kenny Green, and he went right back and got it. But it was great determination, too, Woody. He had to move and jerk around underneath the basket in order to get away from Green uh, enough to put the ball back up. But great effort, great strength, and more than that, just uh, the need to really put the ball back in the hole for Sam Perkins. Three-point play for Perkins gives him 11. I'm sure all the Deacon fans thought he took a step with it, getting position down low, 48 to 43. Tyrone Bogues has come back in the ball game. You'll remember what an effect he had on the first half, changing the tempo. Now Eddie Fogler's shrill whistle off the Carolina bench gets the attention of the defense so Dean Smith can make a change. Bogues double team Smith and Hale coming on the double team. He whips it away to John Tobbs. Now Tom's away to, Anthony, uh, to Kenny Green off the glass. Good. Kenny Green thinking Matt Doherty going right back up for his 19 point. 48-45. Carolina by three with 12 and a half minutes to play. Kenny Smith gives it to Perkins, top of the circle. Now over to Kenny Smith. Smith working against the shorter Tyrone Bogues. Knocked away. Kenny controls it. Got it to Matt Doherty. Goes low to Joe Wolf. Wolf dishes back out to Steve Hale. To Kenny Smith from off the left sideline. Good. Smith knocks the bottom out of it. He's got six all in the second half. 50-45. Across the timeline comes Bogues. He's yelling out the offense against the Carolina zone. Tar Heels back at the 1-3-1 point. To Tom's on the left. To Bogues. Back it goes to Tom's on the left. Beats Tichy at the baseline. To Tom's. To Bogues. Now right wing. They give it to Young. Young back to Bogues. Jump shot from 20 feet. Got it. Did I say Bogues couldn't shoot in the first half? From 20 feet. Nothing but the bottom. 50-47 Carolina. 11.35 to play in the ball game. Kenny Smith against Bogues working to the left. Gives it up to Steve Hale. Hale on Danny Young. We get a whistle and the fouls on Kenny Green. Off the ball against Perkins. Jim Birch comes to the scores table. Says he was holding Perkins and it'll be number two on Green. Third team foul against Wake Forest. Time out on the floor. 11.32 showing on the big clock under the big dome in the Gate City with a score. 47%. And uh, Carolina in the second half with two turnovers. Wake with one, Woody. Wake Forest will have the... No, it's going to be Carolina's ball out of bounds. Green was standing there, there beside John Moreau for a second. 
Now it is Kenny Smith who will pull the trigger on the inbounds play. He's making sure everybody's got it. This is the number two inbounds play. Now Jordan has moved out of bounds. Kenny and Michael talk for a little bit. It's going to be Michael who will make the inbounds play rather than Kenny Smith. Jordan looked to Perkins on the high lob. Couldn't make it to Dart. He comes up the sideline now to Smith. Wake's gone back in the zone. High lob to Perkins. He's double team. Young and Bogues. And Young reaches in and draws his fourth personal foul. Danny Young picks up his fourth personal foul. He has two of the Deacons' four team fouls here in the second half with 11-23. And the Raleigh, North Carolina senior who played for Preston McLean at Enloe High School will have to go to the bench for the better part of this game. Here's Jordan to Kenny Smith, deep in the right corner. High lob to Darty. Back to Kenny. Jump shot. Right corner. Good. Kenny Smith has knocked in four field goals in the second half out of six attempts. He took only one attempt in the first half, or out of five attempts, rather. He has six attempts for the game. 52-47, Carolina once again matching its biggest lead of the game at five. Tom's on the left side for Wake Forest. Back to Bogues at the top of the circle. The little guy gives it up to Rudd on the right. He takes Steve Hale into the corner. Perkins moving out on the double team. Bogues had a notion, whips it back to Rudd. Rudd will come to the baseline, takes the jumper from there, and it's good. Delaney Rudd with 12, and it's 52-49. Once again, Wake Forest whittles the Carolina lead down to three. Hale gives it up to Kenny Smith over on the right side with 10.35 to go. Kenny Smith looking inside as both Perkins and Darty drop to the low post. Now Brad Darty comes high. Perkins comes high. Darty on the left side. Perkins on the right. The pass goes to Hale. Now it's to Smith. High post to Brad Darty. Turns around. Fake goes up for the soft jumper and scores. Deacon fans thought he walked with it, but Brad Darty gets his sixth point of the game. 54-49. Bogues across the timeline for Wake Forest. The Deacons in white going to the north goal. Bogues stealing a look at Carl Casey on the Deacon bench. Green from 14 feet off the front of the rim. Capped outside by Toms. Controlled by Green, and he hands it right back off to Bogues. Now it goes to Toms. Toms comes a couple of steps. Takes Perkins and Jordan. Gets it back to Bogues. Bogues high lob intercepted Perkins. Tried to go alley-oop to Green. Perkins was not going to be taken out of it. He brings it to Hale. Gives it to him. Special delivery right in front of the scorer's table. Hands it off now to Smith. Smith lobbed back to Hale along the left wing. In the side, it goes to Brad Darty. Off to Kenny Smith. Jump shot from there. Too strong. Brad Darty there lost it. Perkins recovers. Tried to bounce it off the Deacons. Bogues intercepts. Bogues coming on the run against Kenny Smith. Here's Delaney Rudd against Hale. Spins away. Leans in. Puts up the shot off the glass. So good. They tap it around. Lost by Toms. He tried to save it. Threw it out of bounds. It'll be Carolina's ball near midcourt. <laughs> A lot of action, Woody. I tell you, when we were down court just a minute ago, and Tyrone Bogues was standing next to Sam Perkins, and that ball was almost out of bounds, and Sam kicked it back in, and the Wake Forest got their break going. It looked like a basketball version of Jack and the Beanstalk, with Bogues standing there at 5'3 against Sam at 6'10. Henry, when he comes in the game, it's amazing how the pace of the game picks up. I can tell that by just the delivery. We're, we're having to go a little quicker with what's going on. Smith, top of the circle for the Tar Heels. Carolina looking inside at a 2-3 Deacon zone. Here's Kenny Smith over on the left side. Feeds Jordan. Jordan makes a catch up at the foul line. Drops to Matt Darty. Darty tried to get in the step. Gets it to Kenny Smith. Whips it to Jordan. Jordan will drive the lane. Puts it up. Scores. Woo. Oh, did one of those Superman fly-throughs in the lane. And it's 13 points for Jordan. 56-49. Carolina has its biggest lead of the game at 7 points. That's sort of where he just gets suspended in midair going from left to right across the lane and scores. Here's Klein from the left. Good for the freshman. Mark Klein with his sixth point, 56-51. The Carolina lead is five with eight and a half minutes to go. Kenny Smith will be picked up by Bogues at the timeline. Carl Casey changing his defense now. Smith gets it to Darty. Down the right sideline, it goes to Perkins. Kenny Smith. Carolina now has kept Kenny Green out of the Wake Forest offense here in the second half. He's gotten uh, some baskets, but he's only, we got a whistle and we got a foul on the play. Jim Burt's coming out from uh, underneath, and it's on Tyrone Bogues, and it will be his first, and that's going to be the fifth team foul. Bob Woodruff, our statistician, shows us that Green is two of six. He's getting the shots, Henry, but they're just not going down. Kenny Smith will inbound. Alley-oop to Brad Darty. Couldn't hold it. Perkins recovered. Went right back up. Lost it. Smith is there. Ball knocked loose. Jordan is there. Reverse layup is no good. Perkins, we got a jump ball. Whose ball is it? Alternating possession. It belongs to Wake Forest. Now, wait a minute, Woody. Joe Forte has now said that he spotted a foul underneath. 
foul is on Perkins of Carolina. It's his second second team foul. 56-51. Well, it was about the fourth attempt. I guess Sam was of the opinion if they're not going to call it, if they haven't called anything by now, they're not going to call anything. Well, Tichi and uh, Sam were both going for the ball, but uh, Forte, who really did look to me like he had the uh, most optimum position to make that call, made the call from way up court. And John Moreau, who was under the basket, had called jump uh, or hell ball. And but Forte rules, and you got a foul like that most of the time, it's going to go to the uh, foul, not the hell ball. Foul came before the jump ball. That's why it overruled. Third personal foul on Perkins. Jump shot, good by Delaney Rudd. Rudd with 14 points, and Wake Forest has cut the Carolina seven-point lead down to just three. That's the third personal foul on Perkins, rather than the second, as I told you a moment ago. Darty to Jordan. Jordan beating Smith along the left sideline. Cross court to Matt Darty. Darty goes low to Brad Darty. Back to Matt Darty. Darty comes in one dribble, then gets it to Perkins. Perkins on the baseline. Bounces it back to Matt Darty. Darty will feed to Jordan. Jordan into the lane. Stops. Pops. Won't. Goes. Yes. Brad Darty was there to follow up. The shot hit, bounced high, and then fell back through. Jordan now with 15. 58 53 Carolina. Exactly seven minutes to play between these two old ACC rivals. Klein from well out on the left. No good. It barely got to the left side of the rim. Perkins with a rebound to Kenny Smith. Smith comes to the foul line. Matt Darty pushes low to Jordan. Jordan up for the shot. Ball knocked loose. Run right away with it for Wake Forest. To Young down on the right. Young fires right wing. Good. Danny Young gets his seventh point. He's playing with four. 58-55 with six and a half minutes to go. Kenny Smith across the timeline now. Wake Forest in the 2-3 zone. Comes over to Matt Darty on the wing in front of the Tario bench. Kenny Smith low to Perkins. Jump hook. No good. Jordan is there. Falls away. Won't go. Brad Darty, Tichy. It'll belong to Wake Forest. Alternating possession. It is Wake Forest basketball. Would be interesting to hear what Terry Holland had to say in our halftime interview that uh, with most of the games this year, if both teams are playing fairly well, which these two teams have been, that the ball games are all going to be decided in the competition. New phrase that's been born out of the NFL. <laughs> Carolina has missed five of their last seven shots after that uh, tremendous spurt out of the gate at halftime. They're now 14 for 23, 61%. And now Wake has made six of their last eight attempts on the floor, 11 for 21, 52% in the second half, and uh, Carolina holding a narrow three-point le uh, lead, Woody. Wake Forest has possession of the basketball and a chance to cut it down to just one, if successful. Carolina, the 1-3-1 zone, Klein to Kenny Green. Back out front, it comes to Klein, or rather to the wing. Now they're out front to Young. Young looking inside, gives it back instead to Klein on the left, gets a quick return pass. Back it goes to Klein at the wing on the left. Carolina's 1-3-1 zone. Matt Darty's out playing the point. Smith, Darty, and Jordan across the middle, and Perkins is the man underneath. Delaney Rudd feeds back to Danny Young. Two good outside shooters, and Young and Rudd. Here's Rudd from 23 feet. Good! Delaney Rudd with 16 points. He had missed the William & Mary game Wednesday night with a slight sprained knee, but the Deacons are happy he's back today, even if he is wearing a brace on that left knee. 58-57. Carolina's seven-point lead, now down to one. Darty to Smith, alley-oop to Perkins for the slam dunk. Dean Smith quickly getting the defense, wanting to get Wake Forest stopped before it can get the transition. Rudd pushes to Young, shot right wing, no good. Perkins taps it and controls it. He gets it to Kenny Smith, 60 to 57. Just over five minutes to play. Carl Tacey now calling out a new defense for Wake Forest. Kenny Smith wants to go to the number five Carolina offense. He whips it away to Matt Darty on the right side. Darty will come top of the circle. Inside to Perkins. The jump hook from the lane is good. 62-57, 15 for Sam Perkins. Reminiscent of Maryland Thursday night. Sam Perkins taking charge, Woody. 4.45 to play in the ball game. Danny Young for Mark Klein right in the midcourt area to teach you at the high post. Now to Rudd. Goes back now to Danny Young over to Klein at the left wing. Comes back now to Danny Young to Rudd. Rudd looking inside. Carolina back in the 1-3-1 uh, zone. At times will look like 2-3 depending on the movement of the ball. Here's Rudd trying to drive on Jordan. Goes down the right. Pushes up off the glass. No good. Perkins got another rebound. Boy, is he something. Rudd swipes at the ball. Sam said something to him. And gets the ball up court. Darty pushes to Jordan. Layup. No good. Lost. Ball loose. They battle for it. Away to Green. How could there not be an 
anything called, but there wasn't. Away to Klein, coming down at the left baseline. Back cross court, it comes to Rudd. Here's Rudd on the drive in the lane from 10 feet. No good. Perkins with yet another rebound. Kiki reaching in on him. I think if Sam wanted to say something that time, he should have turned and said something to Jim Burks. 350 <laughs> left to play in the ball game. 62-57. Dean Smith says, well, if you aren't going to call anything, we're going to put this sucker away. So the four corners has been called. <laughs> Matt Doherty, got to get rid of it. Bounces to Jordan and five-second call against Danny Young. One of the few times the Tar Heels will get caught in a five-second count, but good defense that time by Danny Young to tie up Matt Doherty and not let him get a return pass. I think it points out Wake Forest's excellent defensive uh, play, too, Woody, and they continue to do it down the stretch, down the five-point lead. Carolina 32 to play. There's a timeout on the floor with the score. Carolina 62. 919-962-2296 for tickets to the North-South doubleheader on the 3rd and 4th of February or that Clemson-Carolina ACC matchup here at the Coliseum in Greensboro on the 1st of February. For the game, Carolina is shooting 55% now, Woody. The Tar Heels are 29 of 53, uh, 53 shots. Wake Forest has shot 57, made 26 from the line. The Heels 80%, 4 for 5. Wake Forest 5 for 7 from the line, 71%. Deacons have the ball out of bounds in the backcourt and a chance to get back within uh, three. 62-57 Carolina, three and a half minutes to play. Danny Young works against Kenny Smith. Young across the timeline against Smith. Carolina now back to a man-to-man -man defense. Young coming over on the right. Gets it to Rudd, who works against Jordan. Puts it now back to Kenny Green. Green trying to drive, can't go. Young, Rudd bounces low to Tichy. Tichy turns baseline, forces it up. Won't go. Darty had the rebound, lost it. There's Tichy again. Up off the glass, no good. The foul's on Brad Darty. I believe it'll be his fourth. Brad Darty commits his fourth personal foul. That will be the fourth team foul of the second half, but Tichy will go to the line to shoot a pair. Tichy got around the baseline on Brad. Put one shot up that it didn't go, and it was actually sort of Perkins and Brad Darty who knocked each other off of it with Kenny Green in there. And uh, Tichy recovered and was managed to come back. That's when he got fouled. He misses his first free throw. He'll have another one coming. Carolina has out-rebounded the Deacons 15-7 to in the second half, and credit a lot of that to Sam Perkins, who's just become a tear on the Deacons' board. He's had three off that defensive board, I think, in a row, in addition to scoring four straight points. Tichy's next free throw is no good. The fifth leading free throw shooter in the league has missed two in a row. He's only three of six on the day. 62-57, under three minutes to go. Kenny Smith drives to the middle, hits Perkins as Carolina goes back to four corners, and now Smith becomes the chaser. The freshman from Queens, New York, Archbishop Malloy High School, pushes it to Darty. Darty gives it right back to Smith. Wake Forest has traditionally played Henry the four corners better, I guess, than any other team defensively in the ACC. Here's Jordan on the left sideline in front of the Tar Heel bench. Whips it to Matt Darty, driving layup, he missed it. Tried to lay it up with a right hand and it wouldn't go on the left side. 62-57. 2.20 to play. It was wide open down the lane, going to his left. Darty tried to use the right hand and it wouldn't go down. Rudd gives it now to Tichy. Top of the circle. Here's Tichy on the drive. Brad Darty trying to cut him off. Lays it up. Perkins blocks it and they call a goal 10. <laughs> Jim Birch across the floor calls a goal 10 on Perkins. Tichy will get the bucket. Well, it looked like if that one was goaltending, it must have been on the way down when it left Tichy's hand, Woody, because as soon as it was released, Perkins slapped it away. Kenny Smith across the timeline now against Delaney Rudd. 62-59 the score. Carolina in the four corners. Here's Kenny Smith on the drive. Feeds Brad Doherty trying for the layup. It won't go, and Tichy draws the foul. Tichy picks up his first. It'll be the six-team foul, but Brad Doherty, a 72% free throw shooter, will go to the free throw line to shoot. Well, a missed layup by the Tar Heels' Matt Doherty, and then, of course, the uh, goaltending call against Perkins. A couple of big plays here of late. Brad Doherty, six points, five rebounds in this game. Four of his six points have come here in the second half. Waving arms in the south end zone. Free throw is up, and it's no good. Carolina coming into the game was the number one free throw shooting team in the league at 78%. Team record was 75.8, set back in 1965, but Brad makes the next one, and it's 63-59 with 1.49 to play. 
Denny Young across the timeline. Well out the midcourt area. Carolina in its 1-3-1 one, one zone. Long pass to Toms in the right corner. Trying to come out of that corner. Gives it to Rudd. Now to Young. They push it to Kenny Green. Green covered by Perkins. Wants to go baseline. Does to Tichi. Tichi fighting through the double team. Up with a shot. No good. Tap followed by Toms is good. 63-61 with a minute and a half to play. And Wake Forest stops the clock with a timeout. So there's timeout on the floor. 1.28 to go with the score. Carolina 63. Wake Forest 61. January belongs to Toyota of Asheville. Quarters down court and then the missed free throw by Brad Darty, which made the uh, deficit for the Deacons on even numbers. And then the basket by Teach, he pulls it back to a two-point lead. And Carolina finds itself in a situation here where they need a basket badly with, uh, with a minute 28 seconds. Or possibly, we'll wait and see, they may decide just to sit on it for a couple of seconds. Carolina 16 for 27 has hit only three of their last nine, 59%. Wake Forest shooting exactly 50% in the ball game. Henry, Carolina would be in the bonus if Wake Forest commits a common foul. The Deacons are not yet in the bonus. Carolina has committed only four team fouls. That could be a factor in the final minute. Kenny Smith against Delaney Rudd. Into the lane, driving, takes it all away. Is it up? Oh, my goodness. Kenny Smith, the freshman, took it all the way home and laid it up. 65-61. I kept waiting. When's the pass coming? When's the pass coming? <laughs> Maybe that's what the Deacon defense thought. Tichy loses the ball. Jump ball. Carolina's possession. Delaney Rudd moved around and grabbed Jordan as they came off of it. And Jordan just brushed him off. Rudd took a couple of steps back toward Jordan. And then Brad Doherty stepped in as if to say, to get to him, you've got to go through me. <laughs> I think uh, Michael felt like that Delaney Rudd might have held on just a second too long there, but Carolina's going to call a timeout, would he? Yes, and Tyrone Bogues is coming back to the lineup for Wake Forest. 59 seconds to play, timeout on the floor. The score, Carolina 65, Wake Forest 61. Players in this stretch of uh, second half, Woody, it's been one of the better ball games I think we've seen defensively all year long. <laughs> Star Hills are having a little huddle, as they usually do before they go back to the floor. John Moreau was standing down there. The Carolina players sort of, Mr. Moreau, come on in here. We want to talk to you about something. <laughs> so they got him into the huddle. Whatever they were saying, John Moreau was grinning, laughing a little bit about. They had a good little conversation, then they broke up. We've got 59 seconds to go. Carolina will have the ball out of bounds after the tie-up on that last jump ball. Brad Darty gets it into Kenny Smith. Smith double team to Matt Darty. Three on one break. Matt Darty will not try to go through. Instead, comes back to Kenny Smith. 50 seconds remain. Matt Darty works against Rudd. Rudd sticks a hand in to draw the foul. Rudd picks up his second. That'll be the seventh team foul. I told you a moment ago. Carolina now into the bonus. And to the line goes the young man who brought Carolina to victory a year ago in this Greensboro Coliseum meeting between these two teams when a Brad Darty block. And the final few minutes on a Wake Forest shot that was taken a little quick allowed him to drive the length of the floor. He was fouled, and he went to the line and made both of them for the victory. Bogues and Toms have come out as Klein and uh, Young have come back in. So I think they want to get Klein back in the ballgame, Woody. He needs some offensive punch. Darty first. He misses. Brad Dart. Sam Perkins taps it to keep it alive. What? What a player. <laughs> 65-61. Whistle foul, Mark Klein. Michael Jordan will go to the line as Klein picks up his second. Jordan has gone three out of four at the line today, including two here in the second half. Eighth leading scorer in the ACC. He's the third best free throw shooter in the league, Henry. When Matt Darty missed that free throw, Sam Perkins was blocked out by Anthony Tichy. He was able just to reach over and tap it and keep it alive, but Jordan misses the free throw, Henry. Not this time, Woody. Tichy gets, gets a rebound. Wake Forest can get within two. Rudd out of the right corner. Bounces high. No good. Brad Darty tapping it, trying to keep it alive. Klein saves it in the left corner. Bounces it low to Tichy. Dribbled it off his foot out of bounds. It's Carolina's ball. Tichy tried to put it to the floor against Perkins. Dribbled it away out of bounds. And Carl Tacey wants timeout. He'll get it. 25 seconds remain. Timeout on the floor with the score. Carolina 65, Wake Forest 61. You know 1984 is already better than 1983 because this time last year, tire prices weren't as low as they are right now today thanks to Hendersonville Tire Company. 
Why, you can get new Michelins at 48% off the regular retail price. Now, Michelin wrote the book on radials, and Hendersonville Tires rewriting the book on prices. You see the complete Michelin line today at Hendersonville Tire, Highway 64 East, a division of the world of clothing. Complete brake service available at Hendersonville Tire. The crowds are cheering for the number one nationally ranked North Carolina Tar Heels, and they're cheering for the gold-like Tar Heel pins that are once again in good supply here at Broadcast House at Hendersonville. Stop in Monday through Fridays, 9 to 5, to get your gold-like Tar Heel pins for just $2, or send your money to Kit Country, P.O. Box 2470 in Hendersonville, and your Tar Heel pin will be in the return mail. The crowds are cheering. Of course, in ACC play today, Henry, Duke, and Maryland will follow from Durham a bit later this afternoon, and then Clemson sharing the lead in the league right now with Carolina at 2-0, while Duke's just behind at 1-0, will play non-conference Baptist at home tonight. But we've got 25 seconds left here in Greensboro. Carolina's got a four-point lead, 65-61, and will have the ball out of bounds at the defensive end of the floor. Once again, the big key down the stretch has been the play of Sam Perkins, as it was in Maryland when Sam Perkins and Michael Jordan put on a show in the last four or five minutes of that ball game. But Sam has been all over the court. He really uh, started way back, Woody, about uh, somewhere in the five-minute area with a couple of quick baskets that really got Carolina back on track. And since that time, he's been a holy terror on both ends of the floor, on the rebounding, on the boards. And uh, Sam Perkins would get my vote for the MP MVP of this ball game. Brad Darty will inbound from baseline. Got five seconds to get it in. Gets it into Perkins. Right back it comes to Brad Darty. Brad Darty gets it away to Kenny Smith. Now it's to Matt Darty in the middle. And Kenny Green will reach around and foul it. So Matt Darty will get a chance to go back to the line as Kenny Green picks up his third personal foul. All here in the second half. Immediately after the game, we'll be going down to the Tar Heel dressing room to get the comments of uh, head coach Dean Smith and also talk to a... Uh, Tar Heel player or two about this game and we'll also try to get over to the Deacon dressing room and hear the comments of head coach Carl Tacey. 65-61, Matt Darty, who missed one a moment ago is back there again. This free throw is good. Well, you figure maybe once in a while the guys who are competitors like Darty and Jordan will miss but you keep sending them back up there. Darty ready on the next one. He misses this one. Jordan tapped it but Kenny Green comes down with it. They won't continue to keep missing. Danny Young fires off balance off the rim. No good. We're at 11. Perkins had the rebound and the fouls on Delaney Rudd. Either Rudd or Tichy. Jim Burt's coming out to make the call and it's going to be on Anthony Tichy. It'll be his third. Ten seconds remaining to be played. Tar Heels huddle defensively at the foul line. 8.35 Wednesday night will be our airtime. Carolina against Virginia. The Cavaliers don't play again until then. You heard from Terry Holland at halftime. They'll come in 11-1 to Chapel Hill. Well, it's going to be tough down the stretch, Woody. This game's a very good indication of that. Wake Forest with 11-1 record coming in here. Very capable of beating the Tar Heels, and Carolina has dodged the bullet again this afternoon. Sam Perkins dropped through uh, his first free throw. But uh, this just indicates, I think, of what's ahead for Carolina. It's going to be a dogfight right down to the end of the season to march right back here to Greensboro. They'll have a, a tough time again Wednesday night against Virginia, too. Sam Perkins ready on the next one. This one's good. It's now 68-61. Quick reminder, UNC assistant Roy Williams will be with me on many of these same stations uh, on ACC Hotline on Tuesday night. And a two-shot foul has just been called on Matt Darty. Ball went to Mark Klein deep in the corner. Only problem is, uh, well, they're going to call intentional foul. Wake Forest is not in the bonus, but they're going to give an intentional foul. If so, wait a minute, that might be a technical. But they're just calling it an intentional foul, not a flagrant foul. So to the line will go Mark Klein. Tyrone Bogues wants to get back in the game with seven seconds left. Fifth team foul against Carolina. Matt Darty second. Roy Williams, the UNC assistant, 705 on many of these same stations on Tuesday night on the ACC hotline. Our number is 919-942-8765 on Tuesday night. I hope you'll call and talk Carolina or ACC basketball with us. Mark Klein rimmed his first free throw out. Two-time West Virginia Player of the Year will have another one coming. 68-61. This one is good. 68-62. Carolina quickly inbounds the ball. Darty to Matt Darty, and he gets fouled by Tyrone Bowles. The little guy out of Baltimore picks up his second personal foul. Four seconds remain, so the Heels will remain unbeaten at 12-0, go to 3-0 in the ACC. 
while Wake Forest drops to 0-2 in the ACC, 11-2 overall. Henry, this is uh, among the better starts for a Carolina team. And you go back to years like 82 and 57 to find other years that Carolina teams have gotten off to this kind of start. This will actually be a better start than 82, Woody. This will make them uh, 12 in a row. That year, Carolina won 11 games without uh, losing one. But they lost their 12th game, so this one will better the record of the NCAA champs of 82. Good point. 69-62. Matt Doherty ready on the next one. And it's good. 70-62. to Carolina will win its 11th straight game in the Greensboro Coliseum. It's fourth straight against Forest. Here's Bogues on the drive. Takes a 13-footer. Rims out no good. There will go the horn. The ball game is over. And the Tar Heels wiped out a seven-point first-half deficit. Came back to wind up winning by eight. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis 